compliant with all of the newest items. It's going to have the announcing programs for the visually impaired, for the deaf, uh, for the hearing impaired, etc. Uh, the disabled, the elderly, and people with children in carriages and strollers will be able to just walk up the ramp without a problem. It's a low floor. Uh, that's a great advantage to the ridership that we have. All of the seats are skid proof. Not, no one's going to be able to slip off of them. It's all vandal proof because we've obviously had problems in the past as far as vandalism for the units. The wheelchairs are going to be able to sit facing forward, which is an advantage for the disabled uh, population. It's all air conditioned, although it's not on at this moment. <laughs> and uh, that's going to be a big plus. The, all of the operational items for the drivers with the cameras, uh, the power steering, all everything that works, they'll be able to observe anything that takes place on the bus itself while it's operating, which is a substantial uh, improvement over the past. We're, the, we have two of the hybrids, and we have seven of the low floor diesel. Uh, we're hoping to be able to embark on a five year program to get at least a minimum of seven to nine each and every year so that we can replace our aging uh, number of buses now. We're running a great number of, of 91s still. We have uh, 21 91s, 26 95s, and 12 98s. And that's all of our fixed route buses. We're the, we are the authority with the oldest fleet of buses in the Commonwealth. And the buses have a 12-year life expectancy per the FTA regulations. And at the end of 12 years, you're supposed to be looking at replacement. We're going on 18 years with the 2191, so it's time to replace and improve everything. Hopefully, the sleekness, the air conditioning will get the ridership interest out there as well, so that we can get some increased ridership, because we're going to be facing some serious issues with fuel. These are more fuel efficient. Although the hybrids are very expensive, we'll have to see how it pans out as far as the savings on fuel versus the difference in price between the hybrids and the diesels. I'd have to check. I mean, it fluctuates so rapidly, so quickly, you know, but you're looking like about a 45% increase in basically fuel for sort of a last year to this year. We're operating now on that. Right now on that. About 25, 25 miles an hour, but the engine is running, but it's running on idle. The charges going. What do they say? The difference in fuel efficiency. We come and project a 60% increase in fuel efficiency. I feel that we're looking at maybe around a 35 or a 40 if it's good. If it's good, but you know what? It's an experimental thing. If you put this on the Fall River New Bedford, you probably get a 20%. But if you put it, let's say, on something like a Mount Pleasant Road or a Cushion Avenue or something like that, you might realize the bigger, higher, the higher number. You know? But whether that's going to be enough versus the amount of gallons used, again, surprise, maybe, is another reason. It's going to be a huge savings for warranty.